Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Talented is an understatement when it comes to describing our special guest. Hailing from the city of love, our guest is a multifaceted individual. He's a theater fellow from the Cultural Center of the Philippines, Manila, who finished his fellowship in theater directing in 2009 under the tutelage of one of the most prominent theater directors in the country, Tony Mabesa. He is also a stage director and choreographer of musical plays, concerts, and dance show, a faculty member of the Senior High School Department of St. Paul University, Iloilo, and the advisor of the institution's official publication, The Polinion. He's best known as the president and creative director of Iloilo Prima Galau and the administrator of Iloilo Prima Galau Art Institute. Colossal he comes approaching is the stage king at triple threat in the field of arts, education, and directing. If Australia has you, Jackman, we also have our very own Ilongo Greatest Showman. Mga karomid Romi, let us welcome Mr. Romy Jandilariarte, a.k.a. Sir D. Good morning, Sir D, our Ilongo Greatest Showman. It's a great privilege to have you today sa atong nga Romy Romi, your chica bestie. But the greatest showman inspired talk show solely dedicated to you. I am Pudin Grace Mendoza, and together with Nikaila Nicole Sufficiencia and Christine Grace Lagong, we will be your fellow Chikadoras for today's video. Kamusta ikaw, sir? I am fine. I'm I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. That's great to hear, sir. So, sir, ma feel mo nagid bala ang summer vibes this month? Uh, I think so. <laughs> because maybe I can feel the heat of the sun. Yeah, yeah maybe mm. that's it. So again, sir, welcome to our show. We are very honored to have you today as our guest. Even though bal alam naman yung busy kita ng imus schedule, kagi natagan with kami time, which is very grateful with kami. So for today's video, we will be tackling a very interesting topic that I believe many people are curious about. That's right, Bessie. Today's episode is entitled with the hashtag Ungkata ng Pas, where Sirdi will be answering questions about his personal life. The session will be divided into nine segments named after the greatest showman soundtrack that will focus on the different stages of his life. We also have a one minute drawing challenge to let Surdy showcase his skills and also a fast talk about everything under the sun. Without any further ado, let's get started. Ready, can I be, sir? Uh, ready, ready. Yes, yes. The spirit. This is me. Marching on to the BT drums, this segment will allow us to have a sneak peek inside the childhood and family life of our Ilongo Greatest Showman. Alright, so first things first, syempre nag-agitatanan sa pagkabata. So with that being said, sir, we would like to know more about your childhood. So what was your childhood like, sir? Well, I had a very good life when I was a kid. Uh, I had all the love from, from my parents and then naturally I, I was able to get what I wanted before. Uh, like naturally in, in school and uh, with with the things that I like to have, uh, my, my parents were able to, to give that to me. So basically, the, I was able to enjoy my, my life as a kid before. So Bali sir, let's, uh, so to speak, you were like a spoiled child sir by not, your parents? No, no, I, I'm not spoiled uh, despite the... The, the things that they have given me before, uh, I, I don't consider myself spoiled. Alright, so were you always inclined to the world of art, sir? I think so, uh, because as a, as a child, I was so interested with uh, with watching like live performances. I, I was into like programs on television that would, uh, that would really have like dance, that would really have uh, acting, and at the same time, that would have like a combination of music and, and dance. Oh, that's very interesting, sir. Kaya kung ano ikaw sa una, amugid ikaw subo. <laughs> yes, so, basically. Yeah, yes. sir. That's so true. So, ano, sir, ang mga hobbies mo, sir, sa una? Well, I, I, I go into biking as a physical form, really, of exercise, which until now I still do it. Though I would need to do it often because you know, I'm gaining weight <laughs> now. <laughs> but aside from, from biking, I would really love to watch uh, TV shows. Which I think has inspired me to to be what I am today and, and to be able to do the, the things uh, that I love doing. So that's very interesting at at the same time very intriguing, man, sir. So what were those shows that you mo? 
uh, it was particularly focused more on on musical performances. Uh, like there are movies also that are musical, and then uh, aside of course from from international movies that I watch, I would also go into like local uh, TV shows like that's entertainment. Oh. So <laughs> I mean I, I grew from that show uh, particularly. Okay, sir. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. I, I know that you are not so aware of that. Yeah, sir. I'm. I'm still. I'm just 18, sir. <laughs> and syempre, the generation gap. Yes, <laughs> yeah, of course. That's so true. So, sa una, sir, what were your childhood dreams? Well, as uh, as a kid, uh, it was really my dream to become a performer. But you know, eventually, as I grew up, that has changed in, in a way because also of my exposure to some of my family members because they were into like uh, nursing, they were into medicine. So that has changed uh, the landscape of my dreams in, in one way or the other. I, I wanted to become a doctor. That's why when when I went into college, uh, the, the course that I had was was that of a background for in preparation really for medicine. So badly, in the aligns or so Yes, it, it, it was like so different from the from the passion that I have. But that's still a good thing, sir, because at least it's something that you still like doing, man, sir. Yes, yes. So yes. that's good. So now that you've mentioned your family, sir, so let's move forward na si imo nga family life and parents. So we've noticed, sir, nga, uh, during our classes, ang imo background picture is your family picture with your nanay and tatay, sir. Yes. You are a very family-oriented person. So what is your most favorite memory with them, sir? Your nanay and tatay. Uh, every time then when we are at home, uh, because I have four siblings, so there are like six of us, my parents, and then uh, the four of us. Like when we were kids, uh, we were just staying at home, just watching TV. I, I think that that's one of the most memorable thing that I could even remember. And then there are times that they would bring us to the city because we live in a farm. So since we are far from the city, uh, going to going to the city then would be very special for us. Uh, they, they, they would bring us to the mall and then they would buy us like our favorite toys. So that I, I would always remember. I can relate to that kid, sir, because syempre, my parents are also very busy and I also have a brother, so our bonding time would be spending our time watching the television. Bisan balita lang, sir. It's yes. very intimate yet very special, sir. Uh, in, a, in a way, bisan very simple siya. So, between your parents, sir, who influenced you the most in choosing your career path, sir? Uh, I think they have trusted me more with, with my choices. Although, my, my father, uh, was able to push me to the limit. Uh, when my mother was more on like whatever you can do, uh, as long as you do good, that would be it. But for my father, uh, he pushed me then. Although my, my choices uh, in in college and the course that, that I have that I got or that I took was particularly for me. So like with with who with who influenced me really from from the both of them, uh, I think both of them uh, for, for that reason. So that's very good. At least they they didn't force you into yes, taking up yes, something. Yes. You're not interested. And that's the reason why I also enjoyed every moment of it because I was not forced to do it. Though, though my college course was really difficult because I think I am not really into sciences because I'm 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 lean towards the towards the arts and I took a science uh, course. I mean a, a course that's related to science and it's not really my cup of tea. So that's why it was difficult for me. I was struggling then. But uh, I was able to enjoy it because there was really no pressure, except only for like some personal pressures. Yeah, <laughs> very understandable, sir. And I can also relate with that, yes, sir. Yes. So you mentioned yeah you have uh, other siblings, but sir. So I also saw your post, sir. Nga, si, nga, they are all married, sir. So yes. don't you feel any pressure, sir? Nga, you're the only one without uh, a family of yours. No, no, not at all. Uh, it would always depend on on. On anyone's choice and I think if I have chosen in this way I am happy because if if in case like uh, I I would want to to be married well I have to do it then <laughs> yes <laughs> but anyway I married when you have chosen my, my profession <laughs> I'm married to my profession that's a very interesting take on marriage sir yes, yes. If you were to relate something, like literally anything, with how immense you love your parents, what would that be and why, sir? Uh, since I love them so much, I think uh, I would relate it to the world. <laughs> uh, like, uh, why do I say that? Because they, they mean a lot to me. Uh, everything then is everything that I'm doing now is particularly for them. 
uh, even at this point in my life, uh, in my age right now, even some of my decisions, I would still ask them. Uh, yes, for, for some reason, I still do that because I would want them to be part of, of, of what I do, of the thing that I do. And I would want them to be involved with, uh, with everything that I decide on. That's very good, sir. And I believe that anyone would love to have you as their son, <laughs> sir. Oh. <laughs> Never enough. Knowing that our local Hugh Jackman is undoubtedly a brilliant achiever, the Never Enough segment will allow us to have a glimpse of the making of a champion and his countless achievements. For this next segment, sir, it is about Never Enough. So meaning, sir, oh, never enough. yes, Never Enough achievements. No, sir, it will rain. It will rain, sir. Oh, okay. Yes. Let's start, sir, with the first question. Yes. What was your first ever achievement and how did you attain it? Was it related to art, sir? Not necessarily. I believe uh, I was into academics. So yeah. I would always want to strive hard to be on top or like to be uh, part of, of top 10 or of, of yeah. top 5. So I would always want to, to achieve uh, in my academics. So I think that the first award that I got was into academics, not necessarily towards the arts. Actually, sir, I get your point, sir, because for me, sir, I'm also very competitive, sir, when it comes oh. to academics, sir, and both in arts. Yeah. <laughs> sir, knowing, sir, I'm, I witness, sir, all of your shows, especially Frozen and Moana, oh. and knowing, sir, you're... Yes, yeah, sir, again, I also supported Manang Team, Hula Wing oh, yes. yes. And, sir, knowing and witnessing your craftsmanship, sir, I'm really curious, sir, in total, may you give us an approximate number? of the award you have garnered throughout your journey, sir? Like, literally, uh, speaking. I, I, I'm not, I cannot say that it's countless, you know. I can count, uh, but then, no. I, I don't really count uh, the awards that I have because, uh, for me, at the end of every award is another journey, is another struggle. Yeah, sir. So, uh, you do not just become a better person because of the awards. It would really be the the struggles that will make you really the person who you are and what you are then. You're saying, sir, nga, ha, 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 sir, nga, hindi siya countless, sir, pero daw po siya, sir. <laughs> Do you think that you have already accomplished a lot in your life, sir? Uh, I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. I still have to accomplish a lot. Because remember, as if you have a dream and then if you have achieved it, another dream comes in. Every day, sir, is an yes, open door. Every day is really a new struggle. Every day is, I mean, you have to build your hope every now and then. And as you build new hopes, new struggles would come in. Yes. So after every hope then, another satisfaction would come in. So uh, like for me, uh, as I, yes, I'm happy that I, I would I would be able to, to in a way be satisfied with the things that I do. But again in, in another point it, it is again another thing for you to identify what comes next then after okay sir knowing sir i also wanted to be successful like yeah. you sir what are the habits that you live by that you think are the things that make you an achiever sir well uh i would always practice i, I mean like um, literally practice as three years like practice that will really make you better yeah. and then Patience. Uh, you have to be very patient because not all of the things that you want will be given to you. Uh, patience is very yeah. hard, sir. Patience it's, comes a long way. Good yes, job. it's really a virtue also. And aside from that, it's perseverance. You really have to be determined. If you want that thing, you have to grab it and you have to own it and you have to get it. So I believe uh, when you were asking then of some of the values, uh, I, I, have, I have three things. So that would be practice, uh, patience, and perseverance. perseverance. So that's good, sir. Because sir, iyan ako na sir. Ilive ba? Kung malas sir, yes. one day sir, makita mo sir, art. ako sa stage wow. yeah. <laughs> Why not, device? Yes. Yeah. Come alive. Come one. Come all. To anyone who's bursting with a dream, dreaming with his eyes wide open. Let's witness how our Ilonggo greatest showman becomes more than he could ever be by venturing into his school life. Education is the passport to the future and I believe nga damo na na-stamp ang imo nga passport, sir. So with that being said, sir, may you tell us about your educational background? Well, I was exposed to to school uh, at a very early age. I 
if I can remember it right, I was in school at two years old. I started attending classes because my, my, my mother was a teacher. So that's the reason why I was able to attend classes already with uh, like big kids. Uh, but then eventually after that, I started my formal school in St. Paul's School Barotak level where I began dreaming and where my, my what do you call that, my, my co-curricular activities also started. And I was there when I was elementary, in elementary and in high school. And then in college, I went to West Virginia State University and I, I took uh, a course related to sciences, which is of course far off from the things that I truly enjoy. So uh, as far as my education is concerned, I think that's all. I can relate to you, good sir. I relate with you because my mother is also a teacher and I was exposed to big kids, good sir. They are college students while I am just a two-year-old little girl sitting there in front of the desk. <laughs> and that's a very... Uh, no, sir, that's very fun and that's very interesting to know nga you're at least exposed to a lot of things, especially co-curricular activities at yes. such a young age, which is something I believe me that molded you into the person you are right now, man, sir. I think so. So with that being said, sir, given nga you've mentioned co-curricular activities and academics, have your parents ever put you under pressure at school? What do you mean when say under pressure? Like, the typical Filipino mindset that ikaw ang panganay kailangan mong iaho ng ating pamilya, kailangan mo maging top one, medals, like that, sir. Not at all. I, I think uh, I was I was very, uh, I was very lucky to have parents like them because I never got any pressure from them. They would, they would, yeah, they would happy to see me really succeeding and having honors, but the pressure did not really come from them. It primarily came from me. First, the, the pressure was, was really on myself to excel, and to really do uh, and to be the best that I could ever be in, in all the things that I do. Yes, sir. Maka related ako, sir, because just like you, my parents don't pressure me into doing this that's and good, doing that. Good. And I'm very fortunate to have them, sir. Although, sir, I'm not very fortunate to have a mindset, a very competitive mindset, sir, because sometimes whenever I fail my own expectations, that's the time that I feel burnt out, man, sir. And hopefully, wala ka man sina, sir, naka-experience nga ikaw lang ga-pressure yourself mo again, sir. Nga, to the point nga ga-stress ka dito sa kaugalingan mo. Many times also. Many times. But then, I just have also certain diversions. If in case like stress would come in, uh, I don't know, it's it's just but natural for me to do other things because, you know, I uh, as, as a kid, I have so many collections. I have been collecting so many things. I have been collecting trashes. <laughs> I have been like collecting stamps. I, I am a philatelist. Uh, I have been collecting like uh, sessionaries, I've been, I've been writing poems also since I was a kid. I, I was into journal writing also every day of my life. So when I'm so stressed, I could have really something to do which could somehow let me away from or lead me away from my stress or from my boredom or even like from the, from, from the stresses of life. That's very interesting, Sir Kag, Sir. Boy version ba kita? Because I believe so that we share a lot of similarities because I also love collecting um, papers or like mga stationery. I also love collecting yes, I used stamps. I smell actually books, uh, stationeries. I, I love smelling. <laughs> yes, sir. And also the smell of mga old books. Yes, and it's very yes, satisfying, yes. comforting, and calming. Although, sir, I've outgrown that phase during the collecting stationery. I do collect a lot of K pop stuff right now, sir. Like photo cards I have hundreds of them already sir which i store in uh, a binder sir and that's something that relieves my stress but of course my mental health restored but my finances destroyed <laughs> it's very interesting sir correct, correct. so that's good sir they're not pressuring you into doing something yes. you don't like yes. so with that being said sir let's go to your career choices so what were your career choices back then and are they all aligned with your passion sir when I was a kid, I would I, I always wanted to become a performer because of my exposure really to television and then to movies. But you know, uh, as I grew older, that has changed. Uh, since most of my family members are into the sciences, most of them were nurse, are nurses, and then some of them are doctors also. So during that time, I also wanted to become a doctor. But then, as as I grew older, you know, older and getting older, that has changed again. I went back to my to my former dream and really to become a performer. When well, I was able to fulfill that, and as of the moment, uh, the path that I have is 
really just behind the camera or like behind the stage. Uh, my my satisfaction now is seeing people perform, and when I get to see them doing well on stage, that becomes my joy and my happiness. And your and it's also a very satisfying feeling and a very gratifying feeling. You're the person behind their success, yes, your performance. Exactly. Their I am part of their growth and development as well. Yes, sir. And because without you, they wouldn't be where they are, man, sir. Yes. That's very interesting, sir. And also, sir, uh, you mentioned that you're taking up your master's degree. Yes. While handling so many jobs, sir, an administrator, <laughs> um, a president of your company, sir, and all while being an advisor of the Polinian, a teacher, and all those, sir, ballet. let's say jack of all trades. <laughs> Master of, master, of, no, no, no. master of everything, <laughs> sir. Uh, so what serves as your driving force to keep going, sir? Uh, I always go back to my family. I always go back to my parents. Uh, I'm always motivated by, by their love for me, which I could always feel in that every day. My father, every time I go to school, would, would, would really have to even send me until the gate. <laughs> I am still that little boy uh, who was used to that you know ever since and and my mother every now and then we, we, we talk a lot now about the things that i would wish to do at my age now yes. so I'm, I'm actually 51 years old now and still have that habit of, of conversing with my parents because um, my siblings since they're married already I'm, I'm the only one left at home with my with my parents so uh the bonding that we now have uh, is is really of, of, of quality and i'm, I'm really uh, enjoying every minute of it. That's very sweet, sir. I, um, I just, uh, basing from what you've said, sir, you're a very dedicated yeah. person and a very passionate person seeing how your eyes gleam, sir, whenever you talk about performing arts, mm -hmm. the theater life. So, I'd like to ask you this, sir. Is dedication and passion really everything in the world of performing arts, sir? It's not really just about dedication and passion. It, it, it would also boil down to talent. No matter how dedicated you are, no matter how passionate you are, if you don't have the talent, uh, you may not necessarily be also successful uh, in the performing art. So it has to be with, aside from being passionate, aside from being dedicated, you also have to be talented. I mean, although uh, we understand that talent is, is a gift, yes, it is inborn, but it can also be developed now since there are so many companies, there are so many creative organizations that would give us uh, exposure, that would give us experience. So it's, it, it is easier now to to be talented, okay? So, uh, and more than that, remember that having the talent is a skill. You should have the feet and you should have the hands. Yes. But then passion and dedication should come from the heart. So you should have both the feet, the hand, together with the hand and the heart to be able to be a good performer. That's very inspiring coming from a performer, sir, which is you, sir. So thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Rewrite the stars. Love is an unpredictable and unexpected thing. Some may call it madness, but they don't know how it truly feels like when you're in love. We are curious about who the Ann Wheeler was to Sir this Philip Carlyle and how love managed to rewrite his stars. We all know that Iloilo is labeled as the city of love and love is always in the air. And, that, and this segment is called Rewrite the Stars. Sir, can you describe how love managed to rewrite your own stars? Love managed to rewrite my own stars. Uh, well, love could be the air that I breathe. Uh, it would always be the reason why I look back for some beautiful memories. And it also becomes the reason why I would always want to look forward for the future. So as I rewrite the stars, it would also mean like looking back to so many beautiful things that have happened to me because of love. Well, love for me is very magical. It has transformed me to become a better person and it has made me who I am today and what I am today. So, let's dig down, sir, sa imong love life. Dig down to my love life. Yes, sir, okay. before. Wow. As a very curious teenager, sir, as a single man, sir, oh, you're single also. <laughs> yes, sir. And especially when it comes to love's age, naman hindi kayo naman kung ganang kilig. Can you tell us <laughs> ang experience mo sa imo first love? Experience on my first love oh, yes, this sir. has to be highlighted. Uh, with, with everything that I do, don't you know that I have always been uh, a late bloomer? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to love, uh, love also came in late for me. Uh, I was able to manage love at 
when I was very old already. Uh, I mean, getting into a relationship was was uh, was not really my priority, and it has you know it happened when it happened. So it happened like many years ago only. Uh, I, I was able to establish a relationship like I think in in 2016. So like how old I was during that time? I think I was like 40, 40 something. something. Yes, oh, sir. something 40 something. <laughs> uh, I, I was I was able to establish on that relationship. Uh, because I, I thought it, it was I, because you I thought, thought it I was would ready. work, sir. Uh, but then normally some people could not relate to me, uh, so their relationship did not last long. Um, well, my priorities are, are always very different. Uh, I can say that love is not on is not on the top of my list. It's not on top of my list. Yeah, I I, I think so because. I would I, I believe I, I was married into my profession into the things that I love to do yeah uh, so I, I married a lot of things and when that person comes along she has to also marry everything that I have and it seemed like it was too difficult for her to, to live mm. in that specific situation so that relationship did not last long for sure was it serious or of course that's uh, at my age, <laughs> at my yeah. age, we were so serious. But then, no matter how serious you are, when you don't click, uh, it has to stop. But then, though it stopped, uh, we were able to learn so many things, and we grew from from that relationship. And I am very grateful for that relationship because I was able to to experience a totally different thing. Yeah, different from the normal me that I would expect. So, Balish, sir, siya ang imo first heartbreak. Yes. How did you cope <laughs> up with it, sir? How did I cope up? Well, I, I, I have so many things to do. I was, I was, I, I'm always very busy. Uh, early in the morning when I wake up, I have to prepare the, the school uh, that I manage. And then after that, I have to go to a different school where I teach in the afternoon I have to go back I have meetings and then towards the evening I have rehearsals mm -hmm. and that would be like my Monday to my Sunday uh, for the whole week so I really have no time thinking about the heartbreak so eventually I, I was able to move on because I was able to accept it so I think acceptance uh, would come prior to to that heartbreak because when you have accepted the fact that you are not really uh, for each other, you will not necessarily be hurt after. Can you ask her if how long come on and do good? How long? Yes, sir. Are we together? I'm in your relationship. Well, it, it lasted like less than a year. So, oh, well, like, you come on, like, and I, I'm surprised you deserve it, guys. You do call up a boss, you know, classic tao, can do. I'm very honored, you know, what I from you, ang um, part ang love life. Well, maybe it, it was really uh, brought about my priorities. Yes. So, like, my priorities are just are really just different, which some people could not stand it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, we just need to be very happy yeah. wherever we. Tapat maging content on na sa self ta kagin dito tapat pag pangitaon sa iba nang siguro siya na. Yes, 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 exactly. Thank you, sir. Kag ibut keep in mind kung siguro sir kay kagina malako gimbrikan. Keep in mind kung nalang siguro nga you should you prioritize kasi siguro ang school. I'll keep myself busy. That's what you've mentioned. You need to have diversion, yes, so that you'll be able to forget that heartbreak. Because when you know when you're so busy with so many things, you can do a lot of things. You can write, or like you know you could since you're a writer also you could you could write your feelings so that you could have. Like it's just like sharing to another person. Like mangita kasang way how to express na yes. ang sadness. Yes, yes. Dan niya imukmuk mo sa mo sa side sa mo. Yeah. Thank you. The other side, staying in one's cage or mustering up the courage to find the keys to the door of endless opportunities is indeed one of the toughest decisions we may ever make in our lifetime. Not the king of conventional. Let as witness his journey to the other side of his career. So let's move on, sir, to the other side of your life, the Polynesian life, sir. 
Yes. 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 In my work? Yes, sir. Because I have been a Polinian ever since. Mm -hmm. So I think that I was able to embrace the culture. I was able to embrace the, the system already. And I love being in the system. And I love being in, in the community. Yes, sir. As a Polinian, my God, sir, though, like, for me, sir, though, kanami, so mga baka healthy sang environment. Sir, like, it's a fresh air to breathe, sir. Yes, exactly. And, sir, n next question, sir. Despite the circumstances, sir, syempre, hindi ito na maboy to life. So, why did you choose to stay in Polinian? Well, the very first job that I chose was really to be in St. Paul. And then, after 17 years, 17 long years, I, I opted to leave. Uh, and that I stayed away from St. Paul University for 10 years and then mm. I went back after 10 years. So the reason why I went back and the reason maybe I stayed because of, of the people uh, that I work with. Yes, so sir. Aside from that, it would also be the students also that I love so much. I love relating to them. I love uh, the, the, the moments I spent with them because before I wasn't only a teacher, I was also the the coordinator of student affairs. I prepare all of the activities of the students uh, for the entire year. So uh, I was so busy. My life has been focused on on them, creating stories with them. Aww. So uh, I, I guess that's it. Uh, it was really more on on the people why I stayed here in Singapore. And then some sisters. Mm -hmm. I mean, not all of the sisters. <laughs> some of it because I I befriended and I have learned to love some of the sisters really who stayed here in St. Paul University. As a Polinian, Master, do ka uh, yung relationship between student and teacher, so do ka namin, sir. Tapos, yes. ma-feel ma mo ganyan, sir, nga, it's a home, sir. Yes, yes. So, hindi nat next question, sir, hindi natin ma-avoid conflict, sir. Have you ever experienced conflict with your workmates or even the students, sir? Not that I know. Not that I know. Well, maybe some some misunderstanding, Minor. yeah, some misunderstanding because of ideas. But with regards then to like physical conflict or like very emotional conflict, I, I never had any. Uh, maybe because I know how to how to relate with them well. I, I know how to how to understand uh, them and how to understand each, uh, each situation, and that would uh, and that would be the reason maybe that I was not able to. To be in a certain fight or to be in a certain oh, conflict. Green flag, kagali, sir. <laughs> so, last question, sir, sa school journey. Sir. How do you balance your work life, sir? Your work and your life, sir. Kaya di ba, sir, damo ka, sir, field, sir, nga ginaidrahan. Yes. So, I'm curious, sir, how? Well, literally speaking, I, aside from, from being a teacher here, uh, there was a time that I also teach in St. Paul Barota. And uh, I, I also is the administrator also of. Oh, yeah, and right. I also manage a school and uh, I also spend time being with the kids because they're preschool. Uh, how do I manage? It's all just not a matter of prioritizing. Well, when I'm in school, when I'm in St. Paul, I do the things, I, I do everything in St. Paul. And then if I leave St. Paul, it would mean that, that I'm done with all of my tasks to proceed to another world like uh, Pre Magalao. So I, I, when I'm in Prima Galao, I, I also have to focus myself in Prima Galao. So like when I rehearse, I have to think of the steps. I have to, when I do choreography, for example, I have to I have to focus on that certain dance step or I have to focus on that certain scene uh, in the play mm. uh, so that it will be of, of quality. Yes. So naturally, I, and then I don't believe also, uh, I don't believe that there is such a thing as a busy schedule. Uh, I don't want to hear someone say I'm very busy. No, uh, it would always be out of your priority. No matter how busy you are, when you know how to prioritize things, you will always have to be successful. Ganis, sir, I saw so witness because you're very productive. That is so work, sir. And knowing sir, medyo fan sir, sa mga mo work sir. Kaya pag ano ko sir, pag watch ko uh, Frozen sir, tapos gusto ko na magwatch ang iba tanan yung pre magalaw sir. Yes, I'm that a fan sir. Are you able to watch Beauty and the Beast? Wala, sir. I think, sir, my competition ko to that time, my sports event ko to, that's, nag-conflict, nag-conflict, nag-conflict sa, sir, 
So next, uh, no, sir, let's drive into the other side, sir. They educator and mentor, sir. So your discussions in the subject philosophy, sir, never cease to amaze us. Miss kana ko, sir, like yung connection sa sa life and sa philosophy world. Do ka ano lang, sir? Do ma amaze kagin man, sir. And you make us deep diaper into certain issues that undoubtedly make our minds work the first thing in the morning. Ang mga na sir, amon morning coffee as in. With those insights, sir, have you ever considered the idea of pursuing a religious vocation, sir? Yes, I did. Uh, actually, the, the reason why I I became maybe single because of that vocation that I was not able to fulfill. Uh, if I look back then, uh, after graduating high school, I passed an examination in, in uh, what do you call that? In... Uh, in a congregation oh, in okay. St. Clements, uh, ah. I, I was supposed to I, after the after the what do you call that after the training I was able to pass and then I'm supposed to leave for Cebu. Mm. But then my mother didn't want me to leave. So since I love my mother very much, yes, I offered to stay. Mm. So that has brought me then to West, and just for uh, I, I just for, forgot about my I forgot about my location. And then when I was already working here in City Hall, I got another chance to uh, to stay in, in Guimaraz. I don't know if you're familiar with the Catholic Monastery. Yes, sir. I stayed with a monk there for three months. Oh. Uh, I stayed there for some reason that I would want to, to be like them. I, oh. I wanted to become a monk. Uh, the monks then were into prayer and hard work. They would wake up early in the morning, or we would wake up early in the morning, like at 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. To, to be ready for the prayer. And then the whole day we were working, I was into, I, I was into washing the clothes. Uh, mm -hmm. That was actually my assignment. And then uh, in the middle of the day, we have to pray again. And then until the night when we are about to sleep, we have to pray again. So I have loved the system, but I think during the time my health was a problem. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't really uh, bring about uh, my health. I, I became really thinner. So that was the second uh, time when when I was into my vocation. And then the third time was when I passed an examination in Ateneo to become a priest. Well, I, I also wanted to, to enter during that time. But again, my psychological exam wouldn't let me then enter because of my attachment to my oh, parents. Okay. So, uh, academically speaking, I passed, but psychologically, uh, the, the the psychologist and the psychiatrist did not let me in uh, for some reason because of that certain attachment. Because like when you want to enter into the vocation, if you want to enter the priesthood, the priesthood, you have to Sacrifice. really open yourself and leave everything. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing that I could never do. Yes, yeah, so, sir. I can relate, sir. Kay, uh Muna, man, sir, ang feeling, sir. Kami are kami, sir, relative, sir, nga ma-please, man, sir. Pero, same reason as you, sir. <laughs> hindi man sa ka-proceed kay ang attachment is hindi man gusto yes. ma-boy ani a family, sir. Yes. And, ano man sa mo, siya ang breadwinner, yes. sir. So, next question, sir. Have you ever considered single blessedness, sir? I think so. Well, I'm, I'm single now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single blessed. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm blessed being single. Uh, one thing, one good thing about that is I can do anything I want to do. I am free uh, without necessarily looking into anyone. Like I don't need to check out uh, with anyone. If well, it's your responsibility, good sir. Na, yes, no. I have the responsibility. That, the, the responsibility that I have would be for myself and you know a little for my parents. Oh yes, sir. So, sir, as a teacher, what was something that your students said mm -hmm. or done? That left a strong positive impression on you before the pandemic happened. When I see them learning, I think that that's the impact for me. Uh, when when I see them like succeeding, oh. when I see them graduating, uh, I think that that would be uh, an indelible ink that would be imprinted in my heart and in my mind as long as I live. Oh, ang mga nambas ang amon teachers or mga previous teachers like. They saw us, ano na sir, kung ano na kami subo, mm. how much we achieved, sir. Yes. Natouch gid sila, sir. Yes. And yung impact nila, sir, er, natouch sila kung nara gid sa mong, sir. And sir, how about now, sir, sa new normal setup, sir? Ano naman, sir, yung impression niya, imo, natatak gid? Uh, like, during the pandemic, uh, I don't think I... <laughs> because I really did not enjoy online learning. Oh, my limitations, sir. 
niya, uh, nursing to have a gap. Nursing oh. to have like a missing link every time I, I hold class because they couldn't even see them. I, I, everything that I say would just, I mean, like, I feel like very superficial. Uh, although there's a meaning in, in some of it, but it's really different. So I, I don't think I was able to to do it well as, as a teacher. But how I wish I did. You did, sir. <laughs> you, did. you really left an impact to us, sir. Thank you. That's why, sir. Rest assured now, sir. So last question. As the university publication Spirit Advisor, was there an article that struck a chord into your heart or widened your perspective about certain matters, sir? I think most of, of the articles uh, went, uh, I mean, like, was was able to inspire me as, as, as the advisor. Because I, I would not let any article be carried out if it's not really very touching. So, uh, though I was just new in, in, in this uh, certain endeavor, I would say that uh, I am very proud of the work done then by the staff. Mm. So I think that's it. Yes, because it a uh, different perspective, sir. Most mm. uh, na okay. like opinion sila, mm. sir. You can learn man, sir, mo, and you can Correct. widen something yes, in your knowledge. Yes, yes. The Greatest Show Let's dive deeper into the portals of one of his home grounds where it's covered in all the colored lights and where the runaways are running the night. The World of Performing Arts No one comes close to how excellent you are in your craft, sir, and that is something I've always believed in, Gideon, sir. You're saying, halin sang gamay ko, hasta subong, I've seen you, sir, sa imo mga shows, how you direct, and also I've been a student of yours, man, sir, sang 2010. So, this segment is entitled, The Greatest Show. And syempre, with the Hugh Jackman of Iloilo. And that's you, sir. So, let's move on, sir, sa iyong mga theater life and Iloilo Prima Galao nga life. So, first of all, sir, what was the most valuable piece of advice that you received from the late Tony Mabesa, one of the most prominent theater directors in the country? Well, if there was one statement that he was able to share that I would always want to follow, is to never settle for less. Uh, never be a mediocre and that you always have to be the best that you could ever be in all the things that you do. Yeah, so that is very empowering and very yes, inspiring, yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. And that's also something yeah. that I did by myself. Yeah, I, 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 I always have to think about that every day as I start my day uh, so that I, I could go through with, uh, with whatever things that make up my way. Yes, sir. It's good to be the standard instead of just chasing standards, sir. Yes, correct. That's a very, ano, good, sir. Very inspiring, good, sir. And that's something that I believe we all should think about, sir. Because setting for less is just like uh, making a fool out of yourself sometimes, sir. Because why choose to be something uh, of low position, sir, when you can always strive to be the best version of yourself? Yes. Yes. So moving forward, so, Iloilo Primagalao Incorporated's motto is Dream, Discover, Inspire. So, let's go to the first dream. What were your dreams upon pioneering Iloilo Primagalao, sir? Well, my dream, uh, it's particularly sharing my dream to the youth. Uh, because when I got the scholarship from the Cultural Center of the Philippines, I actually got the scholarship for free. I mean, although it's a scholarship, it has to be free. Uh, but then everything was paid. So, I, I got the best uh, of the people and then of the opportunity. So whatever uh, opportunity I got, I want to share it to to the youth, to the Ilongo youth, or to whoever then is interested uh, in theater. So my dream then is to be able to share what I have and to really empower also the youth to enjoy and, uh, the things that they have, like their talents, and uh, for them to love what they do. So I think that, that, that is really the, the dream. But as far as the company that is concerned, uh, I, my, my dream really is to, is to create an organization or to create a company that will spare ahead uh, the theatrical performances in Ilu Ilu City. Because as what I've noticed, there were very few organizations that have lived long. Yes, there, there were uh, theater, theater companies before, but they did not last long. And I wish that Ilo Ilo Prima Gala will be the will be the company that will really last long. So as of the moment, we are already like 14 years. Now we are celebrating our 14 years this 2022, and hopefully it will still stand tall and stand strong. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. But as so long that, as you're there, a dream. Yes, sir. A dream. 
And then the next is you're going to ask me about like uh, discover or is that the next question? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so the next question is about discover. So uh, I'll state a personal experience. So, syempre, I was one of your little prima galaw kids last yes. 2010. Yes. I remember vividly how you taught us, sir, particularly sa ballet, sir. Uh, and the song was Somewhere Over the Rainbow, pa, sir. Yes. And um, the other song was Humayot Ihayag, sir, for oh. the prayer part uh, that was at Hotel Del Rio. <laughs> and it's something that I'm always grateful for knowing, sir. Nga, I'm just that little girl, sir. Hindi ka pa nag sa skirt sa ako niya, nanay. But when I entered uh, the portals of Iloilo Prima Galaw, sir, pisan workshop lang yun siya doon, sir. I eventually became that very confident girl and also the person that I am now, sir. Yes. Like, not shameless, pero at least I'm very confident in my own way and I can, I can freely express who I am, sir, and also my talents. And that's all thanks to you, good sir. So my question, sir, is... How do you usually help shy little children like the past me discover and, and build their potential, sir? Well, that opportunity, uh, anyway, that's given to the kids will really give them the confidence that they want. Uh, like for me, if if you give a child, I, I mean, you know, my, my thought here is I would always consider the idea that every child is an artist. I, I would always see every child going inside Prima Galau as an artist. So. With that idea, it becomes so easy for me to train them and to provide them with enough opportunity and exposure to be able to build that confidence. So little by little, because the moment they would come to Prima Galau, you they would not be able to, to establish uh, that talent or the confidence that they would want. So eventually, then little by little, I would provide them with, with, uh, with opportunities or with the chances for them to grow and develop, to really become an artist. Yes, sir. Of course, the one that... Uh um, ang ilang teacher is also an artist, so syempre, that's actually very inspiring, sir, knowing how passionate you are and how excellent you are at your craft, sir. And that's something, uh, I, and that's also our, the reason, sir, why I always look up to you, man, sir. And I was, honestly, sir, I was really glad uh, na no, teacher ka naman, sir. And I was really excited and looking forward to it. Bisan bago lang kubugtaw sa agam ako, aklasi ni Sir D. It's something that I really look forward to because I am always inspired by you, sir, halin din sang una. So let's go sa Inspire. So sir, what inspired you into treading this path knowing that the art industry in the Philippines is usually regarded as something of little to no importance, sir? It's always inspiring to... Though, in, uh, I mean, the, the, the theater scene in Iloilo City is actually very poor. No? Yes, I mean, sir. when I say poor, not all of the people are aware of the importance of theater. They don't know exactly that theater could change the world could be an important uh, reason to, to convey a message. Yes, so like personally, uh, my, the, the inspiration that I have would really then for for the dreamers like me, I would always want them to, to continue dreaming and to always believe in their dreams. So believing in their dreams would always inspire me also. Yes, sir. And I do believe, sir, nga, instead of just inspiring people, you also get inspired by them and sir, yes, with the yes, people yes, you also yes. inspire and yes. it's a give and take relationship correct, and correct. a very gratifying one sir and also sir what inspires you to continue inspiring others sir seeing people or seeing artists uh get to develop the talents when i see them on stage uh i'm in a totally different world i'm, I'm in a totally different spectrum uh, so seeing them successful like for example like for someone who doesn't know how to dance and then eventually perform on stage, that is really one thing that inspires me to, to go on and to continue with what I am doing. Yes, sir. That's something very nice, kid, sir. And touching, sir, sa part ko man, sir, because I was one of your little artists man yes, sa una. Yes, and yes. now that I'm grown, uh, I've grown up, na, sir. Na after yes. that, that was 2010, now 2022. That was 12 years ago, 12 years na, years sir. Ago, sa una, sir, you were just the one mentoring me. And now, I'm interviewing you, sir, and it's such an honor, did sir, honestly. So, since that uh, this segment is entitled The Greatest Show, so there's this particular lyric, um, verse, sir. It's everything you ever want, it's everything you ever need, and it's right here, right in front of you, this is who you want to be. Is this really where you want to be, sir, or is this really something you want, sir? Yes, I want to die with this. <laughs> I, this, what, this uh, I, I was able to share this with... Uh, with uh, the artists of Ilino Prima Galau 
that if I'm going to die, I want to die with prima della. Yes. So, I think that would speak it all. <laughs> yes, sir. It's it's your everything, sir. It's like yes. it's your second home, so to speak, yes, sir. It's actually the food that I eat. Uh, it's the water that I drink. It's the air that I breathe. Yes, sir. It's like saying without, without it, it. Oh, yeah. I am nothing. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That's so true. And are you happy and contented with how far you've come, sir, so far? Well, contentment may not necessarily last. I mean, does it last? I mean, it, it doesn't last that long. Uh, right after the fulfillment of one dream, another one comes in. So, uh, when I'm contented with one, that would easily be gone. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I would again thrive into another dream to fulfill. And then, once it's uh, done, I'm satisfied. But again, there will be another. So. Dream never stops at all. So it will yes. continue. Uh, it will lead me then to to another job that I would always want to do, another play that I would always want to do. So new, new play, new experience, and the new experience would bring about new hope, and new hope would bring about new satisfaction. So it's a never-ending story. Yes, sir. It's <laughs> technically a cycle, sir. Yes. So yes, yeah, sir. So thank you very much, sir. Because uh, personally, sir, there's also this verse, sir, a line rather, sa the Greta show, which is where the lost get found in the crown of the circus, circus king. So thank you very much, sir, for being that circus king who helped me become who I am, sir. And thank you very much for also inspiring a lot of minds and hearts, sir, especially the little kids, sir. Besides so mga pandemic, sir. Thank yes, you very I'm much. I'm actually very happy because I got the chance to share also what what I have and what I know uh, for. for Tightrope. The COVID-19 pandemic drastically impacted our own lives, which also inevitably let us all walk on our personal tightropes. Just like P.T. Barnum, Sir D will tackle about how he persisted and dealt with the blisters he suffered from upon walking on the tightrope coiled with the aftermaths of the pandemic. Every cloud has a silver lining at the end. Per before reaching that, sir, maagi gita or maka experience ng type pro, type rope rather, like this pandemic. So, my first question for you as a school administrator and a teacher, what's something that you missed the most before the pandemic happened? Uh, in Ilo Ilo Prima Gala, I would miss uh, the kids uh, going to school yeah. because I would always meet them early in the morning and I would be there for them, teaching them. Uh, during our arts day, uh, because aside from their academics, uh, aside from their teachers handing academics, I would be there for them uh, in their struggle uh, towards uh, stage performance. So that's the thing I miss. In St. Paul University, Iloilo, as a teacher, I miss, of course, being with students, uh, having them inside the classroom and like telling stories and sharing stories with them. That's uh, that. I think would be the the most uh, thing that I missed. Kamis kidman sir sang face to face no. Lain kidman kung sa classroom dance sa screen lang abe. So next sir, what impact has the pandemic had on you and your relationships with your students? As a father figure to most of your students and your artists, do you still keep in touch with them? We are very much in touch with each other because. Uh, you know, the pandemic did not stop us from doing performances. We are just, you know, glad that uh, we we had beautiful opportunities again. Actually, we, we went into online uh, performances. Virtual yes, performance. we went into virtual workshops. We had meetings also virtually. Uh, so, I mean, like, uh, the relationship was still the same. I mean, it's still the same and it's still present as of the moment. So, we were able to, to sustain it. Uh, during the pandemic and I believe we will still be able to sustain it after the pandemic. Even though pandemic sir, ang ban siguro are at Japan. Yes, still strong. Yes, 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 yes. I'm pretty sure that sir nga ang love po for them is grave, gidya, unconditional. Mm, actually, yes. <laughs> Next sir is, what steps did you take and still are taking to recover everything you've lost during the pandemic? Well, financially, we lost a lot, actually. Uh, I think I have shared that in one of my classes. Sa Yes, class. yes uh, that uh, we have lost like close to a million because of, of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We have lost so many shows. We have lost also so many students because they've transferred to, to public school. 
but then now we're starting good uh, hopefully we, were, we will be able to sustain it though difficult it's a struggle to to regain back the system financially uh, but with the help of each one uh, with all of the artists we will be able to bring about shows again and that uh, one lesson that I've learned is to really save also so uh, because of that value I, I believe we will be successful Matamat ng siya yes. din, padayon. Yes, na. correct. Okay, last sir, sa tightrope na segment. Is there anything you regret not doing before the pandemic, sir? Well, I don't I don't really uh, have regrets with the things that I do. Uh, that is one thing that I don't want to do to regret. Because if there's every opportunity that is given, I would always grab it. And then I would always think, uh, bef I mean, you know, before before doing the thing, I would have to really make it sure that this is important. So, for me, not to be able to have some regrets towards the end. So, yes. I don't really have regrets at all. Good luck if my regrets are Correct. Hindi mo balikan. Yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully, in God's grace and perfect timing, mabalik kita sa face-to-face. -face. And personally, I want to witness man ang imo mga show since mm. they've mentioned earlier nga ka namin. Good. <laughs> A million dreams through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before. Discover the million dreams that are keeping our one and only 30 awake in this never done before interview. So, sir, knowing you, sir, you are the inspiration, sir, of someone who has big dreams, sir. <laughs> so, for this segment, we will call it a million dreams. Uh, <laughs> are keeping me awake. <laughs> So let's start with the present, sir. Oh my God. Is there anything you still want to learn or grow old with now that you've reached this point in your life, the Master 51, ka na, with all your accomplishments, experiences, and changes, sir? Well, every day is a learning process. And uh, I would always love to discover things every day. So when it comes then to what are the things that I would wish to learn more, I, don't, I mean, to, to learn. I really don't know, except that uh, I am very open to anything that will happen oh, that's nice. uh, for my growth and development as well. Because no matter how old you are, learning never stops. Right? Yes, so sir. It, it, will, it is continual. As a mom, for the someone, sir, experience is the only yes, teacher. Yes, yes, it's not the best, but yes. it's the only teacher. Oh, that's right, I didn't sir. So, next question, sir. There's this famous saying, sir, na YOLO, or yeah, you only live, only live once. once. And we can see, sir, that you've joined and experienced a lot of things, naman, sir. Was there a part of you that regretted them and believed that you should enjoy life as a single man should? No, no. Uh, as what I've said earlier, I, I don't have regrets at all uh, in my life. Because before I try, before I do things, I make it sure that it's, my, that it's a priority, that it is important for me and then to the people around me. So, like uh you, you've asked of no, um, um experience yes, sir. Uh, like regret yes a regret so i i don't have any regrets but i think there's another question uh, uh and you believe that you should enjoy life as a single man uh, because when i'm at work every time i'm i'm at work i also enjoy so i don't need to, to look for other things to to provide me with the enjoyment so uh -huh. like the if, if you love what you do, it is just like playing. Yes, sir. Yes. It's like you are in a playground doing the thing that you really enjoy and you really love doing. So, like work for me, uh, being in a rehearsal with great students in the classroom, it's like really playing. So, I don't get tired doing it. So, it's really a form of, of, of my enjoyment. You know? So, at a certain point, there might be stresses, but uh, these stresses are called as a new stress. You know what? Yes. The meaning of new stress is a positive stress that motivates you to even do better. So it's not something really negative. Nakaka-miss ka little no stress, sir. Yeah, but, di ba, sir, like you said, sir, you do things you love, sir. For me, sir, na-realize ko man, sir, di ba, hamba nila, once you uh, chose a career, chose a, choose a career nga dapat, kung ano, gin ang gusto mo. Yes. Kag, kidaan, it's a lifetime, yes. di ba, sir? Yes. So, for the second, uh, for the last question here, yes, sir, when it comes to the things we love, we all know that age is only a number. Well, yeah. 51 is only a number. <laughs> Has the thought of age becoming a hindrance to success ever crossed your mind, sir? Is that? Has the thought oh. of age, sir, become a hindrance? No, that's not that's not uh, at, at 51, 
since I'm, uh, again I'm 51 years old but there are still so many things so many beautiful opportunities come in and I would like to grab them and uh, every time I, I grab a new opportunity it's just like starting all over again it's just like uh, 18 years old you know what I mean yes sir. so uh, it's not actually a hindrance it's it, it doesn't even make you become better because of the experiences that you have before. Yes, so learning from them will even make you a better person. And that better person will always uh, shape your mind and your thoughts and your heart. It's better, Ganesh Rambali, it's better to try, sir, than to try and also uh, than to fail without trying, sir. Right. Okay, that, sir, I'm going to be one of my philosophy in life, sir. Because I'm going to remind you that, sir, na, ano, parang never lose an opportunity nga yun. Same, dapat grab it. It's your kwa agit sa angko na mag-it, sir. It's mine. <laughs> yes. Here comes one of the most exciting parts of our talk show, which is the One Minute Art Challenge. So, sir, if you were to relate yourself with anything or anyone sa the show, the greatest showman, be it a character, a place, an article, an object, basically anything, sir. From the? From the show, The Greatest Showman. Show. What would that be and why? Can you draw it in one minute? So we have here a timer, sir, and we'll be providing you with material, sir. Oh, uh, when you draw it, you have to, you have to hold the, the pencil like this. <laughs> so first is you just need to, to have the Basic shapes. The basic shape, like uh, you started with a triangle and then eventually you manage to, to fill it in with, uh, and then you just shade it. You actually remind me of someone, sir. I do have a close friend who loves drawing and who starts out drawing like that, sir. He's actually. Yeah, a STEM student in Iloilo National High School, sir. One of my barcadas, actually, sir. And I find it really fascinating whenever people draw, sir. That's very... Oh, shading. Yeah, this is basic. This is the basic. Five, four, three, two, one. Your one minute is over, sir. <laughs> so I just finish this part only. Uh, it's, it's a mountain. It's, it's very much uh, related also to the great showman because like your dream has to be as tall as the mountain. Uh, just like the characters there when, when they dream about something, when they wish to do something. And then the mountains could be very hard to, to, you know, to attain or like to be there on top. The struggles will be there just like also the, the story in the, in the great showman or in the group actually uh, experience a lot of odds, a lot of, of like negative uh, experiences but they were really able to make it because of hard work and because really of commitment also. So uh, one lesson here is everyone just need to be committed to everything. So it's really just like climbing down. Yeah sir, that's true sir because I do believe sir that commitment is like the Ann Wheeler to the Philip Carlyle of our life sir. So, without commitment, we can never achieve things, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. You so can it's never really see. very vital in anyone's job. Yes, sir. So, speaking of the greatest showman, sir, I'd like to ask you something. I saw your post last week, sir, that you got the chance to actually talk to the you, Jackman. So, how was the experience, sir? Uh, I would always tell myself that I'm a fan. Yeah, I have always been a fan, uh, most especially of very talented actors. Well, I... I like him because he was not all, uh, only good in acting, but he was also good in singing and in dancing. So he's actually a, a total uh, total package. Total package. Yes. yes sir. So I was really overwhelmed. I, I was just so happy uh, because I was uh, I was chosen, not necessarily chosen, but he got the chance to saw to see, you know, to see my my message uh, on the on the fan page, and he was able then to to reply to. <laughs> to my to my message and then we were able to exchange stories already and I was really so happy. I get that feeling sir because Siyempre, knowing nga, I'm a K-pop fan and yeah. there's this K-pop group named Day6 and they were actually doing a V-Live that's like an Instagram live sir. 
and I was actually replying uh, replying to them to their live show even though I'm not a fluent Korean speaker so they actually have English speaking members of Brian Kang and Jay Park when he was still in the band so I was also very lucky and I was very uh, very fortunate sir to be one of those people that they replied to sir and I'm very glad and I get that feeling sir yes sir uh, hashtag accomplished fangirl and hashtag accomplished fanboy and it's a very nice feeling sir like I can actually say I could I can die happy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a nice. I'm always impressed, like with. I don't necessarily cry with anything except only for great performances. Yes, I, I don't cry just for ordinary sake. I, I cry because I, I love the performance. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> So this segment is actually inspired from Tonight with Boy Abunda and this is what you call the fast talk. No, it's not the typical black or chocolates question, sir. Oh. <laughs> so, question one, farm life or city life? Farm life. Theater or teaching? Both. <laughs> Performing arts or visual arts? Both. <laughs> being on stage or being behind the scenes? Behind the scenes. Nanay or tatay? <laughs> Honky or Lucky Me? I don't know Honky, so it's Lucky Me. <laughs> be inspired or be the inspiration? Be inspired. Creativity or hard work? Creativity. <laughs> to have a perfect job or to have a happy relationship with happy the people around you? Yes. Passion or dedication? Now that we're nearing the end of the program, may we give Sir D, the U Jackman ng Iloilo, a certificate of appreciation for giving his time and effort to answer the interview questions given to him by the Group 1 of STEM, E. Christine. Kindly read what the certificate reads. The certificate of appreciation reads, this certificate is awarded to Romy John D. Dalaliarte for lending his time to be interviewed by the members of Group 1 from STEM E12, Our Lady of Peña Francia, in partial fulfillment of the requirements in the course Actual Work Immersion. Given this 24th day of March in the year of our Lord 2022 at the St. Paul University, Iloilo, General Luna Street, Iloilo City, signed by Pauline Grace B. Mendoza Group Leader. Thank you very much. So let us stand up and Shempre, grab the opportunity to make a picture picture with the you jackman ng ilo ilo. So we had this great opportunity nga makamit at maka interview ang you jackman ng ilo ilo. Pero sure, it is not just the you jackman ng ilo ilo because he is the Sir Rob John Inilar Yarte. So let's clap our hands. Thank you, Master. <laughs> so yeah, so kakulang mo na siguro if hindi ka pati to do any certis ang iyong mga signature books sa prima oh, banda. Oh, so you want to join? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, sir, sa 2010, we won't ever mag-end ang show. We had uh, this card si Bala, sir. Oh. So since Ari ka lang mag-end, sir, can you teach us, sir, paano ang card? Since we're already saying that. Card, you're just like a one-page step. Oh. Everyone has to join? Or the three of you? Just us. Ah, okay. But we'll have them join, sir. Oh, of course. Or where will I tell you to speak here? Yes, sir. Teach us, please. Oh, you know. One and two and down and up. Throw, tug, and down. Oh, yeah. One more time, sir. Oh, one more time. One, two, three. 